Red Table Talk. Did you watch it? Did you see the the clip that went around the world that re reverberated around various different scenes? I think that was it's interesting to see sometimes. Sometimes some events on social media seems to capture everybody's imagination or events or gossip or kind of, you know, celebrity stories. And this is one of them, right? It seemed to capture black Twitter, political Twitter, um, news Twitter, work Twitter. Everyone was talking about this situation, right? Which it, it basically stemmed from August Alcina went on this radio sh or talk show with Angela Yee where without being prompted really that hot aggressively, he basically divulged that he was in a relationship with uh, J.D. Pinkett Smith, Will Smith's wife, and that somehow he also or said quite clearly that Will Smith gave him permission to essentially sleep with his wife, which basically perpetuated this rumor or the suggestion that the Smiths were in some kind of swinging uh, poly polygamous, polygamy, yeah, polygamy, polygamy, polygamous relationship that people have been kind of rumoring about for a while um, on all the kind of forums or whatever they may be and on Twitter and other places. It's all been the assertion that they have a bit of an open relationship and he perpetuated that. Um, they, obviously, everyone was kind of astounded by it. They didn't really understand what's going on. Loads of debate. And then J.D. Pinkett Smith came out and said, hey, I'm going to put myself to the red table and sort of talk about these issues. And essentially, we got that video the other day. 12 minutes only. It was a bit shorter than what they usually do. Um, loads of cuts and edits here and there. But the general um, kind of impression I got from it was that, you know, Jaden and Will Smith obviously have a very solid relationship. They have a very solid um, marriage, um, something that you can only cultivate through years and years of suffering and turmoil and, you know, laughs and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. It's, it looks like they've been for a lot together as a couple. So this is just another, you know, another notch in their experience belt. Um, but it also made me think, you know what? August Asina comes out of this looking the worst. He does because... It's very, um, it's very um, unbecoming of a man to kind of um, kiss and tell. I don't think it's ever a good thing for a dude to sort of like brag or to put out a woman's business like that. I think if a woman wants to talk about how small your penis is and whatever it may be, she's within her place to do so. Women have the kind of carte blanche to be as bitchy and as vindictive as they want because it's kind of within their nature. And it's the only thing they can do to get back at you, right? If you kind of do something wrong to them what else can they do right they can't beat you up as much as they want to so the only thing they can do is sort of like throw mud on your name that's fair you should have to just take it on the chin i think engaging in sort of like back and forth with women and calling them out on their name or saying really derogatory things about women in public i don't think that's on at all um especially when you get really detailed and, and in depth with it it just makes guys look like you just look like a you just look really cucky it just doesn't really look good on men so i think in that respect when i first saw Garcina talking about um his relationship with jd pickett smith it just rubbed me up the wrong way like why would he be talking about it why would he put this out in the open then the more he started to speak about it the more i started to see how he kind of carried himself my initial impression was that what actually happened was he kind of essentially took no, no maybe he took advantage or he was taking advantage of a sort of rift in their relationship um she needed a little bit of a new spark in her life they connected they hooked up and he caught feelings like what happens a lot with dudes i think it doesn't necessarily get spoken about often enough but guys catch feelings probably a lot quicker than girls do and probably uh a lot more often than girls do but they don't necessarily talk about it. they always try and brush it off when it doesn't work out like oh that girl wasn't nothing anyway i didn't really care about her but guys do catch feelings i've had been in that position myself where you've gone on holiday you hooked up with somebody it's magical you're spending you know every day with each other it feels like you've been together for a year but it's like three days that you met this person at a villa somewhere and you just you know you're inseparable and then you get back home and you try and rekindle that relationship and it never actually goes there right it never can you can never rekindle what happened prior it just just doesn't feel the same um and i felt that happened to me a few times right and it's hard to take it's a hard pill to swallow that suddenly the person that you were allowed to touch and feel up upon suddenly just doesn't want you anywhere near them there's like you know what that, that, yeah there's, there's nothing worse to a man's ego than that that then you know you had the ability to touch this person and kiss them and then suddenly they just say no enough i don't want you to touch me anymore don't come near me don't talk to me it's like oh it can really hurt you right it can be a real blow to your ego a real blow to your confidence but that's part of life it is what it is but i think in some situations it's also very very clear where you sit in terms of the hierarchy of relationship like where you like sometimes it doesn't really get spoken about either as well but as a dude or maybe it's a yeah, maybe it's a dude thing i think dudes are, are realistic for the most part, when they get in a relationship with girls, dudes are able to see, there's a common joke that dudes, ha you know, you get with your friends where they're like, oh, if they meet up, if they meet your girl for the first time and she happens to be super attractive, like, rah, you, you're batting above your, you're, 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 you're batting, you're batting out, you're batting above your weight, right? 
Yeah, or something, yeah, whatever it may be, right? Um, and we say that to each other because we generally know where we sit in terms of the level of attractiveness scale, right? In terms of our partner. We know when we look across the bed, we're like, rah, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be smashing this girl. I'm actually grateful she's allowing me to because I have no, I have no right to be anywhere near her flipping um, sphere, aura, right? I have no right to be anywhere near her, right? I should be lucky that I even get to breathe the same air as this person. We know that intrinsically, but I think girls have this bit of delusion about them where they can sometimes be a bit like, you know, I don't know. I think sometimes ugly girls can really think they're really beautiful, which is fine, which is great, do that. But they can sometimes delude themselves into thinking that, you know, I don't know, that they are as beautiful as their really attractive model hu husband or something, when it's not necessarily the case. So I think because of that, um, we can also get, dilute, we can we can maybe get whipped a bit more easy, I think, guys. Maybe that's what I'm saying. I think it's a good example. So if a guy ends up hooking with a girl that's way above his batting average, he can get hooked, he can get whipped a little bit more easier because he sometimes can give himself this narrative in his head over a period of time that, oh, she must be with me because actually I'm not ugly, I'm hot. I'm not repulsive. I'm actually really attractive, right? That could be something that you could keep telling yourself. And in the moment that person says no, it's all like well, it's all like a jolt to the system. Like, well, I'm back in reality again. So I think that's what happened to August Alcina. Um, and again, I don't necessarily. I, I just this is the thing I just can't get out of my head. Like, why did he this? Why why did he ever think that she was? But maybe I don't know. Again, we don't know what happened. In the situation. They might be in that at that time when because obviously it transpired from Red Table Talk. Jada Pickett Smith said Will Smith and her had broken up at the time. That's why her and August Alcina were together. But Maybe at that time, it really honestly did look like Jaden and Will Smith were going to separate. So August would be in his right to believe that he had the chance to essentially be with Jada Pinkett Smith for a long period of time. You know, to somehow be, uh, you know, um, Jaden Smith's stepdad and stuff, right? Maybe he wanted that. That's what he actually wanted. He wanted to be a part of their family. Um, but if I was him and I was in that situation, I would just been grateful that I had the opportunity to kind of hook up with her in the first place, right? It was just a once in a lifetime opportunity. You can't necessarily look too long term in it, especially with somebody like Will Smith. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you, and I guess that's the other part of it is this if you're a dude, like from a dude perspective, it, it must be crushing to know that your partner hooked up with somebody else. But again, you're on a break, you're not together, so she can do what she wants. But then to find out it's somebody like an August, it's just like, what? And that's something I've always kind of wondered, like, what, like, it's really interesting that sometimes the most attractive of females um, who end up hook, who end up hooking up with or cheating on their partner with somebody else always end up going for the most corniest of dudes. Corny dudes always win in a really, really high level way. And normal kind of chill dudes like Will Smith can never understand that. You can never kind of process in your head like, you hooked up with that dude? I understand we're on a break and we do whatever you want, but that's the guy you end up going with. That's the guy that you got us kind of like parading our business on TV about and on social media and had us talking on this red table. You had him, August. It must be so crushing. Um, and I guess with Jada too, there must be a little bit of regret, a little bit of buyer's remorse. Like, God damn it, man. He was young and it was a nice fling, but was it really worth it to have this August guy put all your business out there? Like... Really, really, again, interesting situation because usually when this stuff happens, when it's a side piece speaking up about, you know, some sort of uh, relationship drama, it's usually everyone's sympathy is laid with a side piece, right? You know, you kind of led he or she astray, you manipulated the situation. But in this instance, because of the star power, because of the popularity, because of the um, affection that we have for the Smiths, somehow August Asina has come out and is looking at the worst, not the Smiths, right? Whereas you could actually look at it generally from an objective point of view and say the Smith probably took advantage of this kid, right? He came in mentally broken, physically broken. Um, he needed the shoulders to cry. He needed family to take him in and show him what real love was. They finagled the situation in the way that they do. And somehow they've kind of spit him back out. And now he's kind of been left out to the wolves. You could look at it that way, but there's not. Everyone sort of has sympathy for Will, for Jada, has sympathy even for Will about stuff he's put up with when really, you know, you look at, you know, if you if you get a magnifying glass and take a look at some of Will's alleged extra ma extra, uh, extra marital activities, you can say, you know, he didn't necessarily come out of it losing either. But it's just funny, man. Like, you really have to pick your battles and this sort of stuff, man. I don't know what Will's Asina wanted out of this. If it was to promote an album, it didn't work because I haven't listened to it, right? Like, I've completely been turned off by the guy. Anyone that, again, any dude that kind of goes around bragging about who they're... Because even when I was in school, it was always corny. It was never cool. To be like, oh yeah, I smashed her, I did this, we I fingered in the park. It's like, what are you doing? Like, I don't care about that sort of stuff. We kind of 
we kind of um we kind of knew if you did do it anyway we kind of assumed you going off in a bush with this girl or going behind a shed somewhere that something was going to happen sexually you don't need to tell us you don't need to kind of describe in detail how she quivered in your arms all this sort of stuff it's just yucky like what are you doing like have some respect you know what i mean um so when some when a guy does that and kind of puts a girl's business out there like that i just think all right cool in it you, you stay over there like and, and 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 that probably explains why August Asina looks like the kind of guy that doesn't really have a lot of guy friends. There's he's a kind of he's a he's a kind of equivalent of a girl that way. You know those kind of girls that are like oh, I don't really have any girlfriends, and you find out that they are raging whores. I think it's fair to say that August Asina is that kind of dude too, right? Like if you're a girl, you have to be really careful about hooking up with him because if it goes wrong, he's gonna tell everybody, everybody what happened, right? And if you're a boy and you get and you get too close to him, he's also going to tell every girl in your or everybody in your social group about the issues you're having with your girl if you open up to him. Absolute liability, man. Absolute liability. But yeah, um, interesting situation nonetheless. It kind of you know resolved it itself. It looks like that actual relationship happened years ago. August seems to be still hung up on it, which kind of goes a, goes a, goes a long way to say just how beautiful of a person Jada Pinkett Smith is on the outside and the inside. That this guy is still talking about it and still cut up about it it's years and years later. Um, their marriage looks like it's going stronger than ever. And anything, it's a, maybe a lesson to. Maybe it's a kind of an expose in terms of what it means to be in a celebrity marriage and relationship, isn't it? There, there needs to be an acceptance or an understanding that what you would accept if you're a regular couple and what you'd accept if you're a normal couple, it's just different, isn't it? It just has to be. This is why I have a lot of sympathy with somebody like a Colleen Rooney. She gets a lot of stick online, but that woman is an absolute saint. She's an absolute soldier, right? How she's held that family together through all the madness that Wayne Rooney's done over the years. Like she's she's the, she's the constant kind of like she's the she's the she's the one that holds that family together. Yeah, she is. She's the actual linchpin. If it if it transpired, touch wood, that's happened. But if you heard a story girl out there that you know they were divorcing and she was getting everything, you would be like, yeah, she deserves it. She actually deserves it legitimately. What she had to put up with. She's raising what three, four kids, having Wayne Rooney running around doing all sorts of madness, drink driving, smashing nannies. Like, absolute mad stuff, yeah? Getting knocked out in kitchens and stuff. Like, mad stuff. And she just made, remained solid, steadfast. And I'm sure if they were, like, a regular, regular family, they probably would have broken up a long time ago. But when you're a celebrity eye and you're entangled together, yeah? That's the, 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 the phrase of the interview. But when you're entwined in that sort of way and your, you know, your lives are public and all that stuff, it just needs to, they, it, you just need to accept there's going to be things that's going to happen that you just need to kind of put up with whether it be extramarital affairs, whether it be, you know, antisocial behavior, it's just you're just going to have to pop up with a lot more just because you're public figures. You just can't bail and run. It just isn't going to... Because that's the problem. You bail because the press is so intrusive, right? You split up with your partner due to something they've done that's abhorrent and you just keep hounding you. Harvey Weinstein's wife is a good example. Her, his ex-wife, right? Um, a well-regarded fashion designer in her own right. She splits up with him straight after the allegations of him come out and he gets charged. But people are still hounding her for stories. They still won't leave her alone. So it just keeps following you around. So you're, sometimes you're better off just like staying with the person and just deciding, you know what? I'm going to stay. That's probably what... Um, who's, who's that guy? Is it Les Moonves? Who's the dude from CNB? Some dude. I've got his name. Maybe it's him. He's got like an Asian wife who kind of, you know, stead, she kind of uh, stepped down from her role on TV station and just said, I'm going to stand with my husband. I don't care what you say. He's my husband. I'm not going to I'm not gonna break up with him. You're better off doing that because the moment you break up with the person, it just creates another narrative. Then it becomes a divorce narrative. Like people still go on and on about flipping... You know, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston to this day. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes just staying and looking like the fool in the public just might be, it might be just less drama. But yeah, what a mad situation, man. Mad, mad situation. Um, just sad to see these chatty patties have infested the male population in it. But what can you do? What can you do?